Hello and welcome to Rathod's IS. Today in this session, we are going to see current affairs of 15th October 2023. So here, whatever the current affairs we are going to discuss, that is important from your UPSC point of view. And even if you are preparing for any other state public service examinations also, it is useful. And even if you are preparing for any competitive examinations, this current affairs will be very useful. So current affairs became a very important part in your examination. And if you want to clear any competitive examination, yes, you have to focus on this current affairs. And one more thing I have to say here is today is Sunday. And many students, they have the tendency to skip the Sunday's newspaper. So my advice is don't skip the Sunday's newspaper because it will cover current affairs from your environmental ecology and as well as science and technology. So these articles are very important. Okay. So without wasting any time, first let us try to see our daily edition of The Hindu. So this is the Delhi edition of The Hindu. Date is October 15th. And this is the first paper. So first we are going to pick out the articles which are important from our UPSC point of view. And we are going to see which are the perspectives that you need to develop. So whenever I am giving you the ideas or the perspectives that will improve your thought process. So wherever I am saying to do some research, do that research. And after that research, what you understand, please let me know in the comment box. So that that will be helpful for your revision as well. Clear? So first topic is about Sikkim's fallen dam haunts India's dream in Bhutan. Yes, Bhutan is the neighboring country of India. So we are sharing boundary with Bhutan. So what is the relationship between India and Bhutan? So India and Bhutan, they have ties historically. And actually, here Bhutan is very important for India for hydroelectricity. So we are getting this hydroelectricity from this Bhutan. And one more important thing here is, so these hydroelectric projects that are built by India in Bhutan. So recently what happened? Glacier lake outburst flood happened in Sikkim. So because of this, the dam that is Chung Thang Dam. So this Chung Thang Dam had been destroyed. So because of this, what happened now? There is some impact in hydropower projects that we are going to build in Bhutan. So that is the idea regarding this topic. We have to see India-Bhutan relations. Okay, that is very important. And next topic is ferry to Sri Lanka plies after 40 years. That means after four decades. And now again we started ferry. Okay, ferry to Sri Lanka. So this will be very much helpful for increasing of people to people ties. So it is helpful for improving of people to people ties. And even you have to see what is the crisis which is facing by Sri Lanka. So Sri Lanka is facing this balance of payment crisis. Apart from this balance of payment crisis, Sri Lanka is also facing inflation. Right, it is also having debt crisis with China and many projects they had been stalled and agricultural productivity in this Sri Lanka which had been decreased because of organic farming in Sri Lanka and even political instability will be seen in Sri Lanka. So because of all these things now we can say Sri Lanka is in economic crisis and recently Sri Lanka also approached IMF to come out of this balance of payment crisis. And India also gave the assurance and finally here IMF accepted to provide help for this Sri Lanka. So this is the thing which is going on in Sri Lanka. So now here we are launching this passenger ferry service. It is between it is between Nagapattinam and Kanake Santurai which is located in the northern province of Sri Lanka. Okay so here you have to know India Sri Lanka relations. This topic and this topic both are important from your international relations which comes under your GS paper 2. 
Is that clear? So I got, you got perspectives, right? Yes, now let us move on. And here there is a small topic that PM Modi confirms India's bid to host 2036 Olympics. So in 2036, we are going to have Olympics in India. Okay. So it is very, very far, right? It is around 6, 13 years from now. So what happens in this 13 years, we don't know whether the government changes or the same government will be there. So based on the changing of government, again, the policies will be changed. Okay, so just remember that 2036 Olympics are going to happen in India. And you can move on directly to states page. So in the states page also most of the articles are political articles. So here you can see one article that is IMD that is Indian Meteorological Department issues yellow alert for 9 districts in Kerala. So actually what happened? So there is alert of cyclone in Bay of Bengal. So because of this here Kerala it is to receive intense isolated showers in the next 5 days. Okay so here we have to see how many types of alerts will be given by IMD. So please do research and let me know in the comment box how many types of uh, uh, issues, okay, alerts and which are those colors. Please let me know. And if you move on, here you can see some FCRA listed NGOs, they fail to show the right arena of work. So actually we have NGOs that is non-government organization or not-for-profit organizations. So they are establishing to do some service, for example, providing education, for example, to take care of old age people or for example, organ distributions or food distribution will be taking care of orphan children like that. So what happened? So in this context, it said that there are NGOs which had been registered under this FCRA and these are the NGOs says that we are promoting the religion but actually the thing which is not happening in that. So that is the thing and here you have to see some facts regarding this AFCRA. Clear? And now let us move on. Here you can see one article that is Red Fort to host India's Maiden Art Architecture and Design Biennial. So actually, so we are going to have iconic red fort. So here in our national capital territory, we are having this red fort. And in this week, we are going to have India Art Architecture and Design Biennial 2023 that is going to happen in this red fort. So because of this, yes, you have to know some facts regarding this red fort. Okay, so this is very important from your art and culture point of view. And if you move on, There is nothing much important and here you can see street vendors feel vulnerable after COVID-19 despite government is providing loans. So actually because this COVID-19 pandemic, so these street vendors, they had been worst, okay, worstly affected. So because of this government came up with this one Nidhi scheme, it is also called as street vendors Atmanirbar Nidhi. So under this, here government is providing 10,000 rupees of loan, that to collateral free loan for this street holders or the street vendors. So here what happens? So even though here they are facing issues, so this is the thing which I mainly said. So here you have to focus on this one Nidhi scheme. So what is that? So what are the benefits and who are the beneficiaries? Okay, everything that you have to know. And next one here is call to roll out shorter drug regime for TB treatment. So TB is caused by bacteria that is mycobacterium tuberculosis. So if you want to cure from the TB, you have to take antibiotics for sure. So whenever you are taking antibiotics, so you have to follow the strict regimen. There should be no skipping of medicines. So that too for minimum of 6 months of time period. So for six months, you have to take this antibiotics daily to cure this TB. But many people, they will be not taking the medicines. So because of this, that will lead to drug resistance TB. Okay, drug resistance TB or MDR or XDR TB. So here now doctors, a group of doctors and patients, they said that we need 
short regime that is called as bpal bpal so bpal includes beta colon protominate and linezolid for treat for this treatment of this tb okay so this is the thing and here you have to see bpal means nothing but beta colon pre protominate and linezolid so the issue here is regarding this beta colon so this beta colon drug which is developed by this johnson and johnson so jj so this johnson and johnson is famous for this johnson and johnson baby powder baby, baby oil etc right so you might have heard about this johnson johnson baby powder baby soaps etc so that is the same company which is coming up with this beta colon and had patent for this beta colon so because of this patent the cost of this beta colon is high in the market so recently the patent had been completed and it is trying for this patent evergreening so it came up with this patent evergreening so how this patent evergreening is done so actually this beta colon drug which had been came up by this johnson and johnson and now this johnson and johnson company what it is doing here it is came up with an idea to extend its patent for next 10 years like it came up with a salt form of that so it added some salt and it said that it is a new drug and it is a useful for tv and want to get the patent for next 10 years okay so because of this it is one of the issue here regarding this beta colon so here you have to know about tv regarding facts you have to do some research and here you can see center seeks inclusion of traditional medicine on WHO's list okay so if you're talking about traditional medicine in India so we have Ayurveda, Siddha, Yunani etc and even homeopathy also so here this article says that now central government want to include traditional medicine on this WHO's list okay so here we have to see what will be the impact okay so here you have to see why we need to include this traditional medicines on WHO list. That means if there are some concerns in this present healthcare system only, then only we will be moving to this traditional medicine, right? So here you have to see what are the concerns we have in our allopathic medicinal system, right? So this is the thing that you have to remember. And if you move on, in science page you can see the articles that is, how the 6.3 magnitude quake caused another say another of same intensity so here the shallow earthquake of 6.3 magnitude which occurred in this hindu kush mountain range which is present in this afghanistan region and later on again 6.3 magnitude earthquake which again happened at this area 30 minutes later okay so actually we can call it as twin earthquake double or twin earthquake and coincidentally so the magnitude of these two earthquakes is 6.3 okay so it happened in the northwestern part of afghanistan around 11 am okay on october 7th so this earthquake which appeared or occurred because of result of trust faulting near far western terminals of this hindu kush mountains so here in this hindu kush mountains there is a fault line so because of this fault is yes, that led to this earthquake and just 30 minutes after the first quake Herat was struck by another shallow focus earthquake again the magnitude here is 6.3 and on October 11th a third shallow earthquake with the same magnitude 6.3 struck again in the same area of Herat and as a rule here the magnitude of aftershocks is always less than the main event but here unfortunately all these earthquakes are 6.3 magnitude and the second quake is 6.3 magnitude on October 7th is likely to have happened when the release of stress at one point in the hall in the fault resulting in loading of stress of another location in the same fault. So in the same fault whenever the fault is happening so in one region the energy which is released in the form of waves that is called as seismic waves or earthquake waves and again on the same fault again in another area again the release of this uh, energy happened so this is the thing which happened in the in this earthquake okay so this is about this topic and there are some important topics in our science 
that is because of this arctic ecosystem which is uh, having impact because of this climate change that is having an impact on this gray whale population there is decreasing of gray whale population in arctic region because of this climate change events and next topic it is about homo erectus about 2 million years ago homo erectus produced achillean tools so if you are a student of anthropology optional yes these two articles are very important first one is neanderthals and second one is regarding homo erectus so we are going to discuss that okay so here there is article regarding hepatitis c so already in 2018 there was question regarding hepatitis b and hepatitis c in your prelims and this topic is also very important from your prelims point of view so now let us try to see these articles in great detail so that you will be getting a lot of things okay into your mind and one more thing here is if you are watching this Rathors IS Academy for the first time please do subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon and one more thing here is don't skip the video so watch the video until last so that you will be getting a lot of insights and if you are watching till now means I think you might have got some idea regarding how to read newspaper right so if you have idea regarding this if you got an idea regarding how to read newspaper and if you got a new perspective regarding the newspaper so please hit the like button okay so now let us try to see the notes part so first article it is about Sikkim's fallen dam haunts India's dream in Bhutan so we can connect this article with geography point of view we can connect this article with environment and ecology and even international relations and as well as disaster management. So nowadays the questions are not asking only in one subject perspective. There is intermixing of subjects is seen in this UPSC mains question. So you have to be well aware with that thing and you have to read article in the different dimensions. So what is the context? So here recently due to this glacial lake outburst flood, here Chung Tang Dam of Sikkim Urja 1200 megawatts Tista 3 hydroelectric project which is located on this river Tista gave way on October 4th that led to the death of about 94 people in the downstream areas of Sikkim and West Bengal. So in the areas of Sikkim and West Bengal so many people they died because of this glacial lake outburst flood. So here you have to understand what is this glacial lake. So what is this glacial lake outburst flood and you have to see the recent report on glacial lakes. It said that there is increase in number of glacial lakes because of climate change and because of this devastation which has refreshed worries over two of three Indian assisted under construction mega hydropower planets in Bhutan. So these projects are built by India. So that is Punak Changchu stage 1, that is Puna 1, and next one is Puna 2. And these projects are about 660 megawatts. They are estimated to cost around 21,637 crore. And this amount is also funded by India. So because of this, whenever we are coming this type of projects in other countries, that will be also benefiting northern and as well as eastern states from where we are getting this hydroelectricity energy from the Bhutan. So if you see the location of this Bhutan, you have to see countries which are sharing boundary with Bhutan. So this is our Bhutan part. Here we have Bangladesh and here it is very much near to this chicken neck corridor. So this is called as Siluguri corridor or chicken neck corridor. So actually what happened in 2017, so there was standoff between India and China at this Dokhlam Plateau. So this Dokhlam Plateau which is present at here. So it is a trijunction between India, China and Bhutan region. So here if you see the countries which are sharing boundary here. So we have China on one side and here we have India on one side. So Bangladesh is not sharing boundary and Nepal is not sharing the boundary. Clear? And Bhutan it is a landlocked country. Bhutan it is a land locked country so this is also very important and if you see India Bhutan relations so India Bhutan relations which had been started in year 1949 
after we got independence and then we signed india bhutan friendship treaty and this treaty which provides among other things perpetual peace friendship free trade commerce and equal justice to each other citizens okay and in this treaty which had been further modified in 2007 and we came up with renegotiations regarding the provisions of this uh, 1949 treaty and we came with encouraging of bhutan sovereignty and abolishing okay and abolish the need to take india's guidance on foreign policy etc so these are the things that we done in 2007 and india and bhutan they also focused on multilateral partnership for example we are the members in sarc bbi and bimstek okay and we are also focusing on even economic cooperation as well so we are getting hydro power from this bhutan okay so this is very very important and four hydro power projects like chukka kuruchu tala and mangachu so they are about uh, totally 2136 megawatts they are already operations in bhutan and from those hydro power projects we are getting hydro electricity from bhutan and now here pune uh, pune one and pune two so they are under the various stages and if you are talking about the trade trade between india and bhutan which is governed by india bhutan trade and transit agreement so when we signed in here 1972 and recently in 2016 we came up with the renewal of this and even 2021 so we came up with the formalizing of this seven new trade routes for this bhutan bilateral trade and transit and this one is we are also focusing on even economic assistance so india is bhutan's leading development partner and we came up with the launch of this first five year plan of bhutan in year 1971 and this five year plans of bhutan they are based on india's five year plan itself so because of this india is providing assistance to bhutan and this one is we are also having educational and cultural cooperation between india and bhutan so even bhutanese citizens they can come to india for the higher studies as well and even indian government will be providing scholarship to this bhutanese students and next topic is ferry to sri lanka plies after 40 years that means after 4 decades again there is starting of ferry between india and sri lanka so this is a great news that i can see and this topic is important from your gs paper to under international relations so if you see context it says that enhanced connectivity enhanced connectivity was bringing people of india and people of sri lanka closer so this thing which mainly said by our prime minister itself and he said that we are going to start this ferry service again after four decades so it is going to run between this nagapatnam which is in the eastern coast of tamil nadu to this kannake santurai which is located in the northern province of sri lanka so northern province of sri lanka is very important for india because so here tamilians okay sri lankan tamilians they are present here right okay in this northern province and it is very important for india and as when here is here whenever we are going for this type of projects that will be improving connectivity so connectivity is not only about bringing the two cities closer but even it also brings our countries closer and we can also bring the peoples closer and peoples heart closer so this is the thing which mainly said by our prime minister and whenever you are having this proper connectivity that will also helps to increase the trade tourism people to people ties and even we can provide the new opportunities for the people okay to increase their livelihood to promote their growth etc from the both the countries and if you see some facts regarding the sri lanka the sri lanka located in northern and eastern hemisphere like india and this sri lanka is located in indian ocean it is island nation okay it separates from india by this pak strait and gulf of mannar so these are very very important prelims fact and it shares maritime boundary or borders with this maldives okay and india so this is very important and now let us see next topic it is regarding some fcra 
listed NGOs, they fail to show the right area of work. So this article is at most important. So here you have to know about FCRA and some facts regarding the what is the criteria to be filled by NGO. Okay, and this topic is important from your GS paper to under polity and governance point of view. So now let us see this topic in detail. So if you see context, it says that over past nine years, around 407 non-governmental organizations that got approval for, from this union government and now they start receiving the foreign funds and they are using these foreign funds for religious purposes and out of this 407 only 194 showed that they ran Christian programs but what about the others they are not showing any data that means you are fraud. So, if you see details, it says that the registration under this EFCR, that is Foreign Contribution Regulation Act, which is very much necessary or it is 100% mandatory. It is mandatory to receive donations from outside India. And for this NGO or association must have definite cultural, economic, educational, religious or social programs and they can register under multiple categories. Okay, so for this NGOs or association, they must have a definite culture and economic, education, religious or social programs. So for running of those NGOs, yes, permission from this FCRA is important. So if those NGOs, if they want to receive this foreign funds, yes, registration under this uh, FCRA is very much mandatory. So if you are not registering under this FCRA, you will be not allowed to take the funds from this foreign countries. And this act which also aims at regulating both acceptance and utilization of foreign contribution for foreign hospitality. And even it can also prohibit organizations from taking the funds for any activities which are detrimental to national interest. So if any organization which is taking funds but it is not according, not doing the works according to the uh, regulations of this FCRA means. They, their license will be cancelled and because of this in 2023 four FCR registrations they had been cancelled under the grounds of violation of all uh, like on the grounds of violation that all of Christian organizations that is Sheikh Prophet Mission Trust which is located in Tamil Nadu, Holy Bridge Ministries which is located in Karnataka, Kashmir Evangelical Fellowship and Bethel Charitable Trust they are not following the guidelines or the rules and regulations under this FCRA. So because of this, that license had been cancelled. And now let us see some facts regarding this FCRA. FCRA was enacted during emergency in 1976. So because at that time foreign powers, they want to influence the policies in India. To stop that, we came up with this FCRA in 1976. Okay, because other countries, they are pumping money into our country through independent organizations and they want to try to change the internal politics of our country. And the law which sought that to regulate these foreign donations to individuals and associations so that they are functioned in a manner which is consistent with the values of our country. And if you see the criteria under this FCRA, so FCRA requires any person or any organization to receive these donations, they are to be registered first under this FCRA and they have to open the bank account to receive these foreign funds in State Bank of India, that too in the Delhi branch. And they have to utilize these funds only for the purpose which they have been received. So, th so they should not be using of that uh, money for the other purpose. And this one is FCRA registrations, they are granted to individuals. They will be granted to individuals or associations that have definite cultural, economic, educational, religious and social programs. So for all this, it is important. And next topic it is about Red Fort. Red Fort to host India's Maiden Art, Architecture and Design Biennial. So this article is very important. Here we have to see some facts regarding this Red Fort, right? So if you see some facts regarding this Red Fort, 
Red fort is also called because of this red color of the stone which is used for the building of this fort. So it is octagonal on plan and with two larger sites on the east and west. So if you see this image, you can see here we have east and we have west, right? And it is a masterpiece of Mughal architecture. So it was built during this Mughal period and this red fort it is a symbol of their cultural and artistic achievements. And even it was designated as a UNESCO's World Heritage Site in 2007. And this fort which depicted on the reserve side of the new 500 rupees notes also. And it is currently under the management of ASI that is Archaeological Survey of India. And this Archaeological Survey of India which is responsible for the conservation maintenance of this type of architecture. And this Archaeological Survey of India also installed various facilities for visitors. For example, like museums, galleries, audio guides, light and sound shows, etc. in this red fort. Clear? And now let us see next topic. It is about grey whale population. So let us see this topic in detail. So here context says that even highly mobile, they are moving very to the large distance tech. And even large and long lived species are very much sensitive to the changing conditions in the Arctic region. So there is increasing of warmness in this Arctic region. So Arctic region which comes in a temperate and as well as polar region, right? In the northern hemisphere. So but here because of this climate change, there is a global warming. So because of this global warming, there is warming of this Arctic region is also happening. So because of this, even highly long lived and large and mobile species of this grey whales are also have been impacted because of this global warming. So new study which says that population swings in east northern Pacific grey whales, some of which have been resulted in recent mass mortality events. They are, they are driven by changing prey biomass and ice cover in the Arctic. So because of increasing of global warming that led to melting of ice. So because of this ice cover in this Arctic region is decreasing that led to changing of prey. Okay, prey means nothing but the food they are dependent on. So whenever there is a changing on the food automatically that will lead to the death of this grey whales. Okay, there is increased mortality that too in the mass means high number. So climate change is the driving rapid change in Arctic ecosystems. So because of this what happened critical marine areas they are being affected and even migratory marine species are affected. So because of this we need to take some urgent steps to control this. Okay and now let us see next topic it is about about 2 million years ago Homo erectus produced Achillean tools. So if you are a student of anthropology optional background, yes, this article is very important. So if you see context, it says that Homo erectus has expanded beyond low land savanna environments of East Africa and into high altitude regions, the Ethiopian highlands where they produced both Oldovan and Achillean tools according to the new study. So according to the new study, which says that here the expansion of this Homo erectus happened, right? So expansion of this Homo erectus which happened beyond the low land savanna environment. So they are not only present in this East Africa, what happened? So they moved towards high altitude regions also. So in the high altitude regions, so they archaeological people, they found some remnants of this Homo erectus. And this study which came up with the reanalysis of early hormonin fossil and after this study they confirmed that so these mandibles are present they are belonging to this home erectus that means they are not only present in the savanna region they had been moved a long distance even they used to live in the high altitude regions so now let us see some facts regarding this homo erectus so homo erectus is an extinct species of archaic human from Pleistocene era and they belongs to around 12, 2 million years ago. 
and the several human species such as Hidalbergensis and H. antisir. Okay, so with the former general con generally considered to have been ancestors to this Neanderthal, Dinosaurus, and as well as modern humans. So all these people they had been evolved from this Homo erectus. And this erectus is the first human ancestor and they spread throughout Eurasia. Okay, with continental range which is extending from Iberian Peninsula to Java. Till Java we can see this person. And erectus they had more modern joint and body proportions. Okay, so because of this we can say like Homo erectus are the first human species to be exhibiting the flat face with prominent nose. Prominent means coming outside. Okay, prominent nose and possibly spare body hair coverage. That means less body coverage air hair okay and erectus is associated with Acherian stone tool industry and even they are the capable of using the fire so they are the first earliest human ancestor they are capable of using fire hunting and gathering in groups and even they focused on caring for injured or sick group members as well so this is about some facts regarding this homo erectus and now I want to announce about this course that is main translating course that we came up in the start or science and the new batch had been started. So you can join this course. So here in this course we are going to give you the detailed schedule okay for next one year and based on that schedule daily one question will be given to you on Sundays you will be having essay or case study. You have to write answer and after writing answer you have to send your answer to our mail id. So that there will be a detailed evaluation and we will give you the feedback. So based on that feedback, you can improve your skills. And one more thing here is we are going to give you the modal answer for each and every question, essay and case study. Okay, so that you can even download those answers for your further reference. And one more thing here is on every Sunday, we will be having live dog clearing sessions at 7 p.m. So there we are going to have even essay and case study practice as well. So this course is absolutely beneficial to improve your answer writing skills and especially students who are beginners and the students who started writing answers who are searching for a good mentor you can join this course and the cost of this course is 8200 rupees and if you can't even pay that amount in one go you can pay in two installments so if you want to contact us you can contact us on this number that is 8074765513 or directly you can visit our website rathorsisacademy.com there you can enroll to this course and one more thing is many students are asking how to get this class notes so you can join the telegram channel so this is our telegram channel rathors is academy or like rathors is classes so there we are posting the class notes and whenever we are posting the video in the youtube so you will be getting the notification there so you can join this Rathor's IS classes and the link is given in the description box or simply you can uh, open telegram and you can search Rathor's IS classes so that you can get this channel and this is our Rathor's IS academy youtube channel you have to subscribe to this channel and this is our website Rathor's IS academy website so if you are visiting for the first time for our website you have to click on login and register so after clicking on that you have to click on do not have account and you have to fill the details and you have to register so after registering you have to log in with your mail id and password and you can click on the courses and course list okay there you can see these are the wide range of courses that we are offering in the sathos is and if you want to watch the demo videos you can click on the play course and three videos will be opened okay without paying a single penny and here this is our main translating course so here you can buy the course and you can join the course and next one here is foundation course we are providing for UPSC 2024 and 2025. So in this foundation course we are providing entire your GS coaching and the topics will be discussed from basic to advanced level so that you will be not having any doubt okay. And each and every subtopic which is present in your syllabus is discussed here. And one more thing here is this also includes prelims test series, main translating course, prelims booster course and main stresses everything will be included and the price is 45,000 for two years so even if you can't pay this amount in one go so if you pay in one go 
so that will be the further discount will be provided on this 45,000 rupees and if you can't pay that in one go you can pay in installments as well so if you want to talk to me directly you can call me on this number 8074765513 okay so that's all for today i hope you enjoyed this lecture so if you really like this video hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to the starter science academy thank you so much for watching